today we, we're going to discuss, uh, basically the idea was that we could discuss only seats in empowerment, because we always have want to, to have a positive tone to our collective intelligence class. Uh, but more recently, and, and may, well, not, not necessarily after the pandemic, but the pandemic gave uh, authoritarian governments the, let's say, the excuse to increase the level of uh, surveillance that they had uh, on us. And, and notice I say on us, you may think, well, we do not live in a country uh, where we have uh, authoritarian ruling. Uh, but in fact, all governments are to some extent at least authoritarian. Right? Uh, they, they, uh, they try to impose on the citizens um, things and are at least authoritarian when we think of the individual rights or the individual uh, wishes, not, not necessarily rights, but our wishes for independence, our wishes uh, to go where we want to go, to do what we want to do. Um, um, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, with the pandemic, uh, although we wanted to go many places uh, due to the, the health crisis, we were not expected to because we would be contributing to spreading uh, the virus. And that provided uh, governments with an excuse of starting monitoring. Of course, those governments who are really authoritarian in their roots uh, were able to go much beyond in terms of uh, uh, tracking uh, its citizens and, uh, and using that information that was gathered. Remember last class we were talking about humans as sensors. We became sensors of our own behavior uh, uh, and all that information um, becomes, the, the more electronic our society gets, the more that information becomes available uh, to some parties, uh, definitely to governments, uh, they, they do have access uh, to a lot of information about us, but also to, to enterprises that, uh, although they say that their main goal is to satisfy their customers, uh, we have to say that they only want to satisfy their customers so that they can get more money, right? Uh, so that there's a, a, another target, another objective that is higher uh, than the satisfy and satisfy the, the, the customer's um, uh, objective. Uh, and they are collecting a lot of information on us, and they are also performing surveillance on, on us and using the data they collect to feed their automatic systems that are starting to, and I would say, think in between uh, quotes here, but uh, that's, we, we see the, the, closer, the, the closer we get to a real artificial intelligence, uh, the least, in quotes, we have to have um, uh, those statements about the, the possibility of, of, of the systems that these organizations have to control what we do, to understand our behavior, to understand our feelings, and uh, based on that, to propose us what is good business uh, to them uh, at a specific uh, situation, right? So, uh, in, I'm not sure, yeah, I, I don't remember, Leymar was one of the students in this class, I don't recall if it was last year or the year before, uh, but he contributed to, to, the, to, to, to the class here with this text by Harari, 2020, which I hope we'll have the opportunity to, to read. Um, let me just change here. To, give me just one second. That's, that's the text. It was uh, published on the Financial Times, uh, one of Financial Times series. Uh, and it was uh, sort of warning us about uh, the level of surveillance that was increasing during the pandemic simply because governments wanted to make sure that we were not spreading the virus. But by doing that, they were also putting uh, or, or setting infrastructure, uh, technological infrastructure, that would allow for that surveillance to keep going afterwards as well. So let's say a health crisis is an exception time. We, in general, we as a population accept some additional level of authority uh, imposing uh, on us what is good for, let's say, for so society in general. Uh, but at the same time, when we get out of those exception times, we want to be able to have our uh, ability to decide on our own what we are doing um, of, our, of our time. Um, so, um, in this uh, text, it's, it's a it's, a, it's a, a magazine paper, it's not an academic paper. But there is, uh, uh, the, the author makes some interesting sorry, remarks uh, on where we're going, where mankind uh, may be going, uh, based on the decisions that we were making as a society and the 
and the allow uh, and, and what we were allowing our governments uh, to do. So uh, uh, there's there's this topic here about the under skin surveillance, meaning that we of course it's not only uh, we're not being tracked only by the information that is gathered from our cell phones. Each time we have we're starting to have other other gadgets attached to to our body, uh, smart watches. Uh, well, some some level some, some people uh, have uh, other artifacts to control the level of sugar in their blood uh, or whatever. Uh, runners uh, keep track of uh, their their heartbeats and, and and all of that information is being gathered electronically and can be uh, collected and compared to other data that exists about us to an extent that there will be a a, a, a time and if, in fact we're not far from that uh, when uh, our emotions not only our emotions, our expressions, our in fact, our behavior will be could be fully tracked, and uh, based on that kind of information, uh, we, we we could be targeted. If we're thinking about companies, uh, targeted by their advertising. If we're thinking about governments, uh, targeted by uh, their um, let's say political uh, uh, campaigns or, or intentions or ideas, which should not be. I mean, if we think that we are the government. We should be the government, we, we, but let's say if we assume that we are the government, that's that's no problem. But are we the government, right? Uh, do we really are we really represented by those who rule uh, our countries, our regions, states, uh, cities? Um, they have a lot of information about us. Um, we, in fact, we have so little information about them that we keep uh, even advertising uh, our own criminals, right? <laughs> and like if it was a, a soccer contest, each one very emphatic about seeing all the problems with other people's candidates, uh, but never seeing how horrible their own are. So, in fact, considering that our representatives are not necessarily as good as general people, uh, this, this, these guys also have uh, concerns here. Um, I don't know if, uh, uh, for those who had uh, a chance of reading this, what caught, you, caught most of your attention, but it's, uh, it's uh, basically concerns Pandemic uh, uh, time, times concerns, but pandemic times concerns that reflects what could happen afterwards. Uh, and uh, indeed, we're just in the middle of a situation now that here in Brazil, uh, the, polem the, the, the polemic of the week is if our ex-president faked his vaccination uh, card or not, considering that he also always claimed that he, he was never uh, vaccinated, right? But notice, now that's a lot, another information that uh, the world has uh, or, or about us, have you been vaccinated? So we're sort of, we talk about collective intelligence, but at the same time, we think that collective intelligence is to take humans to another level of uh, intelligence collectively built, but not necessarily a herd's uh, sort of intelligence in which we all have to be vaccinated because there is uh, some superior order or whatever, right? Uh, but again, uh, see, we, we, we now all that information is available. So uh, depending on uh, our individual de decisions, and here I'm, I'm not, I don't want to argue against uh, um, full compulsory vaccination, which is a hard uh, thing, because uh, definitely you have no individual choice in health crisis, because I think that that is definitely a collective uh, uh, issue. But at the same time, notice that when we get to, to, collect, to, to a collective that makes things absolutely compulsory, uh, the intelligence of the, the individuals is not respected at all. So, uh, a, a lot of uh, issues uh, raised here. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Maybe uh, uh, the, the paper is not as, uh, doesn't call as much attention now after the pandemic. Uh, but again, uh, we have to read with the mood of, that we had in 2020, 2021. And mainly, I think what, what still uh, remains here is this concern about, um, about where, we, uh, where we can go if we keep accepting that the level of surveillance increases. And we do accept that by, it's not, I mean, we're not being formally consulted about it. Uh, we are only, we're, 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 it's the small decisions that we, we, we take individually on a, uh, on a daily basis that affect uh, how the level of control that uh, systems will have uh, on us in the future. So this is the reflection here, right? Uh, we also, uh, I also included uh, for today's discussion this Obama's memorandum, something that was written in, I believe it was 2007, right? 
we have to think that nothing happens in an empty space, right? So it was not that Mr. Obama was there one day, you know, and decided, yeah, let me write an open, uh, how we call it here, an open, a transparent, sorry, a, what did I do here? Uh, a transparency and open government uh, memorandum, right? Nothing happens in, in an empty space. Uh, this happened after at least we had the technological environment already uh, suitable for that. Uh, we, we have already discussed a little bit about the Web 2.0 and how that changed from from what we today call Web 1.0. Of course, when when we were we were do, when we were doing it, we didn't call it Web, web 1.0 because we didn't know that there would be 2.0. But Web 1.0 was that static web in which that that still reflected that already had all the technology that we needed to make the internet more inter, uh, interactive, but didn't use it simply because the first use we make of new technologies is to to try and do what we already did before in a more efficient way. So everyone was trying to replicate on the web what they already had in other media. Right? But after that, maybe at the beginning of the 2000s, remember there was in 2001, there was a uh, Nash crash. There was when, let's say, when the collectives realized there's something wrong with many of these uh, uh, companies that are, let's say, electronic companies, these companies that only happen, uh, only exist on the, on the web, that have never generated profits, that do not have a good business plan, but that say that, 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 that are only, only uh, uh, based on that uh, saying, build it, build it and they will come. When will they come? And, and in fact, they were coming. They were, each time more people uh, uh, arriving and using those services, but at the same time, no revenue stream to support it in the long run. So what was happening there was that uh, many of those companies uh, were not able to generate profits that was uh, uh, enough to, to pay the, the stakeholder, the, 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 the shareholders, uh, what they had invested even in 500 years. So they started realizing this is crazy, started selling and, and we had that crash. But the companies that survived were the ones that instead of trying to be efficient and do what they had already done in the past in a more uh, efficient way, were the ones that thought of ways of doing different things. And the different thing there in Web 2.0 was include the customer or include the, the, whoever was at the other side and build a dialogue. Remember Makina, 1995, Makina was already telling us, use the, the new technology that we have to build a dialogue with your customers. And building a dialogue meant collect all the information we get about, uh, we can about them, organize information, make sense of it, and uh, react to, to it in a way that customers will perceive that you are providing them with more value. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, companies, companies that survived the Nasdaq crash of 2001 were the ones that were doing Web 2.0. So if Web, web 2.0, it's not that it started in 2002, right? It is that in 2002, we were seeing these people, everyone was looking at those companies that had survived and noticed, well, what is the pattern here? What do they do that the others that failed didn't? They collected, they, they, in fact, they were trying to build a collective intelligence network with their customers, with their suppliers, with everyone uh, around them. So that, that was the beginning of the 2000s. That was absolutely necessary for a movement uh, like, uh, uh, like this one by Obama, uh, trying to, to generate a, some principles of our government has to include its citizens. The government has to be, we're going to talk in another paper for today, the idea of we govern or we govern, I don't know how you say that in English, uh, as being, if, it, if technology makes it easier for all of us to somehow intervene when, when it's possible for us, when we are a little free, with uh, micro tasks, with little, with little efforts, but if there are millions of us, then we, we can actually help the, go the, the government, and this is the, 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 the principle uh, for we govern, the other, the other paper, and, but this is also the, somehow the principle of this uh, a memorandum by uh, President Obama. He thought, if we include people, if we first, we, if, if we become transparent so that they see what we're doing, they will help us make sure that we're doing what they find good, right? Uh, they may even put some of their muscles and their brains to work and help us in doing that. So this was, this was a, this is a, a very Web 2.0 principle. Another thing that had happened at the beginning of the two, 2000s was the open innovation movement. Right? I don't want to say that uh, open innovation was so big uh, as an, op an, an eye-opener as Web 2.0 uh, because uh, uh, 
I mean, the, the Web, Web 2.0 was there for everyone to see. Uh, well, we could, we could even argue that open innovation was also there for everyone to see because when, when you have Web 2.0 and when, when you start interacting with other stakeholders, with customers, with, with suppliers, with, with society in general, you get that, open, that, that innovation from the crowds already because you, you get fresh ideas uh, to support your decisions. Right? But let's say the open innovation movement, it started, uh, the, the, the expression word uh, open innovation was uh, coined by Chesbro in, again, I'm not sure if it's, it's 2003 and 2004. So uh, um, Obama was simply reacting to what was happening around the world and the, poss the technological possibilities that were available. But at the same time, uh, the, it's not only it, it's technological uh, possibilities at one end, and at the other end, uh, I, was, I was going to say customers, but in this case it's citizens, citizens demanding more uh, more transparency and, and, and more control over uh, whatever government, governments will do. Right? Um, this, this memorandum is, is not very long, so if you don't mind, I would like to go through it and, and we can stop and uh, we can pause and, and, and discuss a few of the things here. Because you will see that there is, I mean, it seems that uh, President Obama was a collective intelligence um, researcher. Uh, that, that's that's uh, uh, very similar to what many collective intelligence researchers were discussing uh, at that time. So, memorandum for the heads of executive departments and agencies. Notice, you write a memorandum to well, in this case, at least, to show a direction. What he was intending here was to say, well, I don't govern this, uh, this country alone. There are all these uh, uh, executive departments, as he calls them, all these agencies at national level, and maybe they can inspire others at state levels or, or local levels. But our idea here is, uh, is that I want to, to have this as a principle of my government uh, with respect to transparency, and then uh, uh, what, what, what he calls open government here. So my administration is committed to creating an unprecedented level of openness, openness in government. Right? Had he read Gauton, 1903, or I don't remember the first decade of the, the 1900s, Gauton was that guy who was against democracy because he thought that we were all dumb, and then made that experiment with an ox, remember, the, the, the wisdom of crowds, uh, and after that he realized that his assumptions were wrong and again, I think that I, that's something that I, I really love about this guy, because we are usually so convinced about our ideas before we get them proved that we find ways of proving them, when, even when they're wrong. Right? So academics, we, we try to, 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 to be honest with our research, but many times we're so, we all want to have a, a better world in which to live. Right? So many times we become activists of those ideas in which we, we believe. And I'm sorry to say we have to have passion for research, not for, uh, for our ideas. Right? Our ideas may be right, they may be wrong. We should be as, as far from them as possible so that we can do research like Gauton did and said, look, I thought the, the world was functioned one way. I found out it's exactly the opposite and, be, and, 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 and become an ambassador of this new finding that you have. Most of the times, and yesterday I had an argument with uh, my technology and society uh, class uh, about the way we, we already believe in the and the results that we want to get with our research. And we, we believe so strongly on that, that there's no chance that we're going to get a different result. You know? uh, we get that because that's what we want to get. And, and then we, f we push that to others as scientific research that was unbiased. But it wasn't. Right? It was. So um, uh, Gauton uh, uh, already thought of uh, the, the importance of, uh, here of, of in involving those uh, the, the citizens, because he, he realized that democracy was about killing all the biases, right, and, and keeping only the knowledge that each one of those individuals had. Uh, so uh, we will together, uh, uh, we will work together to ensure the public trust and establish a system of transparency, public participation and collaboration. Public partic public participation and collaboration. These are going to be two important things here, and they are definitely two very important things for collective intelligence because obviously co if we're talking about collective whatever it involves participation of, of a larger group uh, well here he's talking about collaboration uh, we have already seen here in this course that uh, sometimes collective in intelligence is achieved by means of collaboration other times it may be just coordination if we're working more like little ants that have small brains but capable of doing specific things, 
coordinating is very important. Uh, if we have uh, clever people, let's say humans are, are, are clever and humans want to have this, this wish to express their ideas and, 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 have, and have ideas, uh, then, uh, and, and mainly when, we, when we're thinking about where we want to go and everything, collaboration is a, a probably a, a better process whenever we can uh, use it. Uh, notice, uh, for example, voting is not collaboration. Okay? Voting, you vote for an idea, someone else votes for another idea, and then uh, later the one that gets more votes outrules the other. Uh, but maybe the, the process of discussing before voting the the, 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 the exchange of ideas that will lead people to see the advantages and the problems related to whatever they're going to vote afterwards, that is a collaboration process, right? At least if it's, it's made in, a, in, a, in an honest way in which you, you want to, to expose your point of views, but you don't want to uh, force your views on others. We know that humans are, again, we're not perfect on that sense, and, and, and maybe because we're so, again, we're so, uh, confident that our, our ideas are good, sometimes we, we are a, dic a little little dictators that want to push and, and make sure, sure that the others go with our idea, even with, without listening to theirs. But if, if you get collaboration, uh, uh, it means that you are open-minded to different ideas uh, and you're going to collaborate on getting whatever uh, is possible. So uh, notice that it, what, what he's proposing here is not any kind of, uh, of, of collective intelligence. Collaboration and, and besides, cooperation is a little more demanding than simple coordination because I can coordinate simple tasks. I ask each one of you to, let's say, to check how many cables you have behind the computers in your desk there, right? Each one of you will be simply uh, focused on that and then we sum it, sum all of those up and we get a result that is the, the number of cables that connect computers in this room, for example, right? That is only what I'll do here is I'll, I'll coordinate your work because I'll say we're not going to be counting the, the cables that are in someone else's desk, right? Uh, make sure that we only count, we, we don't want them double counted or anything. So I'm coordinating that, but each one of you is working completely independently, right? Obama here wanted collaboration. Collaboration is, is different because it, it involves working together, right? Uh, uh, it's uh, probably more, even more if we, if we thought of, uh, uh, let's say, the principles of, uh, of governing, it's more democratic because it will involve everyone's points uh, of views, uh, in spite of not none of them being necessarily the one that will uh, rule out the others. But uh, but it's it's not necessarily the only way to go, right? Openness uh, will strengthen our democracy and promote efficiency and effectiveness in government. See, we use these words here, and I, I, I keep telling you that uh, if we look them in a, in the dictionary we may still find that they have the same meaning there. But for business and for governments, uh, they have already incorporated the difference between efficiency, which would be doing something right, and effectiveness, which would be doing whatever is right to be done. So uh, being effective is, is going the right, in the right direction, going, uh, being efficient, maybe it's going fast, right? Um, and, uh, and he thinks, uh, he claims that, uh, he will build a, a government that is more efficient and more effective if it's open. You could say, why didn't uh, someone think about this 50 years before, right? Uh, I mean, you, you, you may claim that, well, he's a Democrat, uh, he's in the Dem 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 Democrats uh, party, and the Democrats are more, they're more focused on the collective, right? I always say that the, maybe the main difference between left and right, from my perspective, is that and left and right as, as uh, ideologists, let's say, is that everyone wants the good of the, the, the country or wherever they, they live, but the, 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 um, the right, uh, uh, those that are right-oriented will say, let's give the individuals the, the opportunity to progress, and when they progress as individuals, so society will progress as a collective. And let's say whoever has a more leftist uh, ideology would say, you know, let's work together, let's, uh, uh, let's emphasize the collective, and then we'll grow collectively, and then the cake is going to be larger, and, and each one will have a larger slice. Everyone wants a larger cake, uh, except that uh, they're dealing with different um, uh, ways of doing it. I would say that probably, if we, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that right now, collaboration is probably more leftist, and coordination could be more right-oriented. But, you know, I, never, I, I, I don't understand the differences that the world makes between those 
those two ideologies, and I usually tend to think that whoever says I think this way or th think that way is already probably uh, in a, in, in, on the way to, to defend people that are indefensible. Uh, we should be, uh, probably we should uh, act more collaborative, uh, co collaboratively when we think that working collaboratively will, will provide us with better chances of increasing the, the cake. And we, we should emphasize w uh, ways in which people work more individually, therefore more uh, um, uh, with, with coordination, but each one doing their, their own stuff, when that seems to, to take to, to the larger cake. And I'd say different situations will probably require different ways, and, and, and maybe the best thing that we can do, and the best thing for a, for a democracy of humans is where we always have the chance of choosing who our next um, uh, leaders are going to be. Oh, and, 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 and maybe uh, if we're free to choose to change, because there will always be, I mean, as, as we're all sort of blinded by our, our own convictions, there will be a time that others will have to say, look, Alex, what you have been proposing was great up to now, but from now on we want to go uh, this other way here. And, and later on they, we, we may ask you to, to, to lead again uh, in the direction that you were, you were going, but at this time we think that we need a little more. It's that thing, when do we need uh, to focus more on the social aspects of our, our society? When do we need to, to think more of the, on the, the economic aspects of society? But probably that will, will be what would, should rule intelligent, smart people in a collective that respects uh, each other. So there will be times for more collaboration and, and times for more coordination, if we think. Uh, but of course, a Democrat as uh, Obama will always have a tendency to, to be more collaborative. Uh, uh, because, again, uh, it's, let's say if, if we can say that anyone in the United States is, uh, uh, well, and, and I think we can say, can say that there is a socialist, the Democrat Party would be that one. Right? Okay. Um, so governments should be transparent. And then he is going to explain why he thinks that governments should be transparent. Transparency promotes accountability and provides information for citizens about what the government is doing. Information but maintained by the federal government is a national asset. A national asset means it belongs to all of us. Uh, my administration will take, uh, take appropriate action consistent uh, with uh, law and policy to disclose information rapidly in forms that the public can readily find and use. Executive departments and agencies should harness their new technologies to put information about their operations and decisions online and readily available to the public. If I make my decisions readily available to the public, if I make all my actions readily available, I, I expose myself, well, in, in the sense that uh, people will know if I'm doing right or wrong, but at the same time, I, I, I benefit from the possibility of having everyone who's, who's checking that, telling me, look, you're, you're going in the wrong direction. Uh, or, please keep going that way because it's, we're, we're enjoying it. We understand that politicians do not want, uh, uh, many, many times they, they may not want, because they're individuals like us, they don't want others to be telling them what to do. Um, and this is, by the way, why uh, a memorandum of intentions like this uh, was difficult to implement in the US and, and has also been difficult to implement elsewhere where people follow that. We, we did follow that in Brazil. I mean, if you think of this mov movement for transparency in government has increased over time. Um, it may again have had a bounce back during uh, uh, our last um, uh, government, which was more, let's say, more, uh, a more coordination kind of sort of uh, government and not a collaboration. So they, 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 uh, the, based on, on that, broad and maybe weak definitions that I had of right and left here. Uh, but it is something that uh, will keep being pushed because, simply be first, because technology allows and because uh, uh, we as humans uh, liked Web 2.0, liked the idea of participating. Of course, we don't want to, to sit on the, the mayor's uh, chair and, and start ruling the city. We don't want to, to become the, the president of the, the country. We say, well, you. You, you have been elected for that, I haven't, but I have my, my opinions to share and I even have my muscles and brains to collaborate uh, with uh, decisions and, and, and actions, right? And this is what he was trying here. So, um, uh, so uh, uh, executive departments and agencies should harness new technologies to put information about their operation and decisions online and readily available to the public. Okay, executive uh, departments and agencies should also solicit, look, solicit, public feedback to identify information of greatest use 
uh, to the public. Uh, this was 2007, right? Uh, I mean, maybe he had, he had Ray, Red Makina, who wrote uh, uh, his, uh, the, the paper that we discussed in one of our previous classes in 1995. Build a dialogue, build a dialogue with the citizens. We, Makina was focusing on the, the customers of companies, but governments, to some extent, I don't like uh, uh, this, this idea of, of thinking of it, the government as having the citizens as customers, uh, but to some extent we are customers of govern, government services. I don't like that, uh, that concept very much because, in fact, it, 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 it makes it difficult for us to become collaborative if we already think that, we, that, that they, are, they are in our payroll, let's say, and they are our, um, they're working for us and, and whatever they're doing, uh, uh, we are their boss in the sense that we have voted for them and we pay their salaries and now they, they have to provide us with services. There are some, some services, for example, uh, garbage collection, that's a service that, uh, that the mayor provides to the city um, um, because uh, uh, it, it's, it's more efficiently done uh, when we have one only entity doing it for, for the, let's say, for the whole city than if each one of us decided to take our garbage to whatever garbage um, processing unit there is in the city, which is probably uh, dozens of kilometers away from where we live, right? So instead of each one putting the, their garbage in their car and taking it somewhere, we, we hire big trucks and do that. So that's, that's, that's public service being provided by, let's say, by our, um, the officials that, that are, are, are uh, managing our cities, our state governments, and, and, and even the national governments. But there are other things. Uh, uh, for which we are not customers, we should be active, much more active agents. And this is what uh, he wants to pro promote when he is asking feedback so that uh, better service can be provided, but at the same time, uh, a lot of this feedback will come in terms of uh, citizens helping decide priorities. Citizens help uh, developing actions that will make those pi priorities uh, effective and, 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 and so, on, so on and so forth. Um, so government should be participatory. See here, it's, this is the part of uh, the concept of government that is not a service. Right? I don't need to participate in the garbage collection of my, my city, but I should, be, uh, I should participate in deciding what needs to be done, and many times in doing things. For example, in spite of not being in charge of collecting the garbage, uh, I should, uh, I should uh, possibly feel obliged to, when I see some garbage on, uh, in my street, going there and collecting it, so that that doesn't provide other dirty people the bad example of, yeah, this is the place where we can dispose of our garbage because it seems that people don't mind, right? So for example, one thing that I, I try to do here in the, the university, whenever I see a, let's say, a piece of paper uh, on, on, on the floor in, in one of the halls, I will there, I make sure to collect it. And if I can collect it in front of, you know, dozens of students who are not doing anything about it, that's when I feel more obliged to do that, to try and, 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 and push that collective into acting in a more, let's say, collaborative way, right? You could say, well, this is a service that should be provided by a company that was hired to keep this place clean. But can't we do our share as well? And can't we show others that it's possible? If each one, each one of us cares for a little bit of, of the problem, we will make it a much uh, smaller problem for, the, the, the man, for those who are managing the, the solution of it. And it may even become, in the case of uh, our, our city, for example, it may become cheaper for us. We may even have to pay less taxes at the end of the year if we all do little things that make uh, uh, the, the efforts developed by the, the, the mayor to solve the city problems um, uh, a little more, uh, a little easier. So government should be participatory. Public engagement enhances the government's effectiveness and improves the qualities of its decisions. And besides, when you engage people, you start getting them committed. My, my, my reasoning for why uh, uh, you know, many students sometimes are there, that one of them throws, uh, uh, it's, it's not common here, right, at, at UTFPR, yeah, but sometimes, I mean, someone of them throws, or, some, or it was already there, and nobody's scared, and I go there and I, and I, I, I pick it from the, the, the floor. Uh, I'm showing, I'm part of a, a movement to show that we, this is, this is our duty, this is not, this is not something that we should expect that uh, someone else is going to be doing do for us. Right? Same thing when we go uh, have lunch in one, uh, let's say, at the, the shopping mall. Uh, 
they, they do have cleaners to to separate that they could separate let's say the the the, from the remains of uh, after we finish have lunch there's there's paper there's plastic there is a lot of they do have people that could do the, the that separation right maybe it's even their job but can't we ju just try and do our share and let's see, if each one separates their own garbage that already makes their service much lighter uh, and maybe it will be less expensive for us at the end so collaboration leads to uh, systemic gains and, and, and this is probably what Obama, Mr. Obama is, is, is finding here Knowledge is widely spread, uh, dispersed in society. No, notice this. Knowledge is widely dispersed in society. Has he read Pierre Lévy? Remember, Pierre Lévy said, each human knows something that nobody else does. And that was the grounds for him to build his collective intelligence uh, philosophy. He says, so if each one of us knows something that nobody else knows, we have to, we have to, to coordinate our share, we, we have to, to be able to uh, and be willing to listen to others, but we notice it's collaboration, but it's all here. It's also um, um, uh, coordination because we should uh, find uh, ways of coordinating all those people to make sure that those who know express their, uh, their ideas and, and the others listen. This is something that, in fact, we haven't learned to do yet. Right? I think this is probably the the largest mistake, uh, or at least. Uh, uh, with our social networks, or this is this was the problem that we generated with the algorithms that uh, emphasized putting you to talk with other people that think similarly to you. Right? That didn't provide us with the opportunity of learning something new. Um, but notice, uh, so Pierre Lévy was here. Uh, has he, Mr. Obama read Pierre Lévy directly? I doubt. Has someone in his team that helped him shape this memorandum? Right? Maybe, maybe not, because. Even Mr. Pierre Lévy's ideas are an expression of a time where we think, yes, it is possible. We have technology for that. Right? Uh, okay. Uh, executive department. Where is it? Uh, I got lost here. Uh, okay. Uh, so as knowledge is widely dispersed in society, and public officials benefit from having access to that dispersed knowledge. Right? Public officials benefit from having access to dispersed knowledge. Collective intelligence. Right? It could be collective intelligence in, in the way of collaboration. It could be wisdom of crowds in the sense of coordination. Uh, executive departments sorry, uh, and agencies should offer Americans increased opportunities to participate in the policy making and to provide their governments with the benefits of their collective expertise in information. Galton will be proud of Mr. Obama. He would say yes you have realized that citizens together will do better than any bureaucrat alone. Uh, executive departments and agencies should also solicit uh, public in, uh, input on how we can increase and improve opportunities for public participation in government. And then he, he starts uh, discussing the, how, uh, uh, the, 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 the ways in, uh, or, or the fact that government should be collaborative. Collaboration actively engages Americans. So notice one important thing here about the, the collaboration is not, is not that collaboration leads to better results. It may also lead to better results, but collaboration engages people. And engaging people will turn customers into citizens. Right? One of the reasons why he wants this uh, transparent government and, and, and collaborative uh, government is it is because he doesn't want to have uh, citizens as customers. We, we, we did have citizens customerized, I just invented this word here, right? I believe. Uh, uh, by, because we are, we, are, we are customers most of the time in a, in a, cons uh, in a, in a, cons in a society that is so consumption oriented, right? We're consuming goods all the time. And then when we have to deal with government, we are already inclined to think of uh, gov uh, the government as a provider of services. And that's bad in the sense that it doesn't allow for Collaboration uh, we would be only be demanding things. So uh, he claims here that see, it's the first thing that he talks about collaboration. It is that engages people. So this we should uh, also think of that for small or big, or big, big groups that uh, with which we are working. Uh, collaboration. If, if, you, if you allow people to collaborate, they will be more committed. Uh, executive departments and agencies should use innovative tools, methods, and systems to cooperate 
uh, among themselves, uh, across all levels of government, and with non-profit organizations, businesses, and individuals in the private sector. Executive departments and agencies should solicit public feedback to assess and improve their level of collaboration and to identify new opportunities of uh, cooperation. Uh, here again we have two words that sometimes we treat as almost synonyms, collaborate and cooperate. But we have to distinguish for our studies here. Collaborate means that we have probably common goals or aligned goals, right? Cooperation doesn't mean that necessarily, right? We may cooperate with, with someone because in the short run that, that's good for, for us, so it's convenient. Uh, but cooperation may simply happen that each one is trying to achieve their own objectives, but by working together, they will be able to do that. At least this is my uh, the understanding I, I, or the distinction that I was able to make of those terms after my reading of, uh, or the, the, the distinction that we make uh, from, from our reading in, in collective intelligence. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, whenever we are collaborating, we are cooperating, but the opposite doesn't happen necessarily, right? We may be co co cooperating means operating together with the same goals, not necessarily, but for whatever reason we, th we think that for now it's okay, right? Uh, we may have completely different goals and we are cooperating. The, again, to, to get back to politics, that happens a lot in Parliament. Many times, uh, opposition and, and, and government leaders decide on some agreement that is definitely cooperation. They're cooperating in the short term. In the long term, each one of them wants to go in, in a different way. But for now, they think, for now we have to go together. Right? I direct the chief technology officer in coordination with the director of uh, the Office of Management and Budget, of, these are two agencies there in the States, and the, administ uh, the administrator of general services to coordinate the development uh, by appropriate executive departments and agencies within 120 days of recommendations of an open government, open government directive. So notice, this memorandum is not an open government directive. In fact, I have never searched for that. But maybe this is something that one of you could do, is to check what happened in those 120 days. Right? Many times politicians are very enthusiastic and then that. But uh, I mean, they, 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 were, they, they pushed this, this open uh, uh, government uh, uh, ideas uh, very far in the US during Obama's uh, term. Uh, so I do believe that we do have an open government directive. If, if anyone finds that uh, there, just uh, include the link in our, in our uh, Google Meet uh, platform for this recommendation. Because this recommendation, that would be, he's, he's saying, we, we want to go that way. But I'm not a specialist here. So all these guys that I mentioned here work together there, collaborate and generate uh, a, a directive to be issued by the director of the OMB, which is the Office of Management and Budget, that instructs executive departments and agencies to take specific actions implementing the principles set forth in this memorandum. So, so this memorandum is only defining the guidelines, the principles. Okay? Uh, how that is going to be performed, and mainly knowing that uh, sometimes someone has an idea, but while not everyone is absolutely convinced that that's the way to go, maybe there should be some very um, precise guidelines on the, uh, based on which all those agencies could be measured afterwards. Right? You, you didn't do it according to the, to the, to the, gui to the guidelines that were proposed. Okay? And then the memorandum is not intended uh, to and does not create any rights or benefits here. It's the, this is the lawyer, right? Saying uh, substantive or uh, procedural, enfor uh, enfor enforceable at law, or in equity by a, part, a party against the United States, in, in its departments, agencies, or entities, its officers, employees, or agents, or any other person. Yeah, this, this was not written by, by him. This was the lawyer coming later and saying, look, uh, there's always a chance when we're, we're trying to do something big. There's always a chance that someone will take it somewhere else, so let's make sure that uh, this is not going to bias the interests of the, the United States and so on and so forth. All right, uh, so notice uh, this memorandum, uh, and, and of course, when, when considering that today's uh, idea is to talk about citizen empowerment, the, the, let's say the root concept here is empowering the citizen. But notice it's empowering the citizen not because Mr. Obama wants the citizens to be stronger uh, necessarily, of course, I, I, I do believe, but because he thinks that by empowering the citizen, citizens, he also empowers the, the government. Uh, he makes that government more, uh, more capable of doing what the, uh, 
the voters wish, and therefore they will be happy to vote for him again in the, the future or whatever. Okay? Uh, so uh, this, this, I, I do think that this Obama's memorandum started a trend in the Western societies. Uh, many countries, Brazil among them, have done a lot since 2007. Is it 2007? 2007. Huh? 2009. All right. Okay. Sorry, not this one. This one here. So since uh, 2000, and, yeah, January 2009. Okay. Uh, since then, to make sure uh, that mainly to, to make sure that they, they're able to engage uh, the citizens. When that doesn't happen, or, or where that didn't happen, what happened was that citizens later on starting started protesting. In, in years that came after that. We, we saw a lot of uh, movements. Here in Brazil, we have ours. Né? Many people going to the, the streets. I have to admit that I was one of them. Uh, going to the streets to, not necessarily to protest, but to, yeah, to, to show that they were unhappy about something. And I remember having at that stage, I would discuss it with my wife and with my students and say, I don't know necessarily uh, if we all have the same. It, it seems that we're all cooperating there because I see people with different uh, flags uh, and, and, and people with different interests showing uh, you know, signs with uh, things that I do not agree and then there are other people that, that show things that I agree. But it's impressive the amount of people that are going to the streets and basically what we probably we were saying is we want, we want the same. We, 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 we're seeing that things are not going uh, a track that's uh, a way that we, we, we find reasonable. Each one of us has a, a different idea about that. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we, we saw that later because uh, uh, we, we, we had, I mean, I mean, I remember in, in those movements, one of the things that happened, and I, I thought it was crazy, was that we always had maybe a truck with these guys that were saying that they wanted the, the army back. And I said, uh, at that stage, I have to admit, I had no idea that they would ever succeed on that. Because I thought it was such a, such a crazy thing. What are those nuts doing? But anyway, they were there. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, what are those nuts doing from my perspective? Uh, it seems that that perspective was not so, so crazy after all because it, it, it engaged a lot of people uh, uh, later, later on and, 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 and they, were, they were able to even uh, elect a president. All right, uh, then what else do we have here? I don't know, uh, feel free to, uh, again, I, I find it difficult to if you're writing anything uh, in the chat, I find it difficult to follow it from here, so if you get going. No, uh, I did a quick search and I found the uh, open government uh, that was the, uh, the Obama made, made a plan that was uh, first launched in 2010. Uh -huh. Then it was updated in 2012, the second version, the third version in uh, 2014, the fourth version in 2016, but then it mm. got discontinued. Yeah, well, it got discontinued because again, as I said, we should have the right to change directions, and uh, and unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, in our democracy, our democracies are not strong enough so that we build on the good ideas of whoever came first, regardless if they're from our, the same party or not, right? So there's many of the disruptions that happen, and it's not only in Brazil, it's in the United States and in, in European countries that, are, that allegedly have much more, much stronger democracies than ours. Uh, there's still a lot of discontinuation, even of good ideas. Again, notice that a good idea, this is a good idea, but it's a, it's a good idea that, that is very well adjusted to democratic, uh, democratic parties' mind of uh, collaboration, right? Of the collectives first. First, we, we bring the, uh, empowering the collectives, not the individuals. And then when they elected another government that had that idea that I have to empower the individuals, like I give the individuals their rights of doing things, and then they will do big things on their own, and, and that will help society as a collective. Remember, it's, it's, it's always seems to me to, to, to be to me as being a matter of where do we start growing whatever we, we want from the individual or from the, the, the collective. And so we understand that there was a, a pushback, but uh, so and, and this is why it, it seems that it was uh, abandoned. No, it was not abandoned because all all the ideas that are brought in mainly after the Web 2.0, it's this is sort of unstoppable. Of course. The problem we have now is, is polarization that makes people not think of uh, this of a, as a good idea, for example, if they, are, if they belong or if they support the other party. It's, it's soccer team supporters that are uh, unable to. If, it's their, if, that, if it was their idea, it's a bad idea. Right? That, that, 
Okay, uh, maybe uh, if you could uh, include the link uh, uh, in, in our WhatsApp group, I, I will later, uh, later I can even include here in, the, in, the, in our Moodle platform. Great. Um, and then we have Linder's um, 2012. What is it? This is now a, an academic paper, right? Um, and uh, the idea here is going from the e-government to the we-government, uh, in the sense that uh, it empowers the citizens to an extent that they feel that they are actually the government. Yeah. No. No. I don't know where it is. No, no. Uh, it's not all right, um, so, so as an academic uh, paper, uh, we, we, we have those things that you will have to, to have in your academic papers, and, I, and many times I prefer to even focus on the structure of a, an academic paper than, than the, the idea, because of course you've already read it, uh, because you will be writing those uh, papers like those. And so uh, one interesting uh, thing here is figuring out, for example, if the abstracts uh, uh, one thing that I find uh, that is interesting, for example, in the abstract, what do we usually need to have in in in, a, in the abstract of an academic paper? The objective. The objective. Methodology objective methodology and results, right? Can we be, do, do something different to that? I mean, there's always a possibility, but I keep telling you that a, an academic paper, uh, dissertation, or a thesis is a boring research report. Boring in the sense, we don't want to, to make it boring, right? Try to make it, make it exciting, but a report is not never going to be really exciting, right? Uh, because it's a report, you're, you're telling, it's going to be, maybe the results are going to be exciting, right? Maybe the methodology, it's going to be exciting because uh, someone, someone who reads it thinks, gee, I can use the same metho methodology to solve another problem, and, and that's, that, that, that's what I'm uh, uh, trying to do right now. Uh, but but we don't, we're not writing literature. Uh, we're writing a report. And therefore, the closest we get to what our academic community expects, the easiest will be for us to have our, our, our let's say, words uh, spread. Right? There's two ways that you can communicate uh, the results of your research. Publishing it in the proceedings of a conference, which, is, which tends to be less, uh, less final, because conferences, I mean, the web page is, is on, the, on the website, maybe three years later it's not there any longer, I don't know. Uh, some, some of them try to, to be very reliable in, in keeping the proceedings there forever. Uh, but the idea of the conference is uh, still that you're still working on, on your project and and you, you're sharing your ideas because you expect to have other people uh, responding to it so that you can improve it further. And then there is a the publication in a journal. Right? So journals in different areas have slightly different reporting uh, templates, let's say. I'm calling it a template. Of course, it's, it's very strong to use the word template, but if you want to publish in a specific journal because you think that that's the journal where your research is going to get the most attention, you have to read other papers that have been uh, published there to understand because it's not going to be in, in most cases it's not, not going to be a, a definite a definite uh, template it's going to be you know the the, the way of structuring that uh, the editors are, are more pleased with or the, even the readers are more pleased with so for example if you're doing research involving IT and government this uh, uh, government information quarterly here could be a, an outlet for your for your research, but then you have to see read papers that were published there, and see, uh, you know, the, the general format. And it's not all the general format is not okay. It's written in two columns, which I find weird these days. Like uh, I mean, two columns here. The abstract is only one column, but below it's two columns. Most of us read things online these days, and having to go up and down doesn't doesn't seem to make much sense. Uh, but it, but that's that's easily adjustable, right? I'm talking about what what for example appears in the abstract. So. The objective, the methodology, and the results is something that appears very often in, in, for, for many outlets, outlets in many, for, for many different uh, academic communities. 
Uh, so I would definitely, if I don't know exactly where I'm going to submit my work yet, <coughs> I would try to do that. And so what was the objective of uh, this paper here? Co-production, yeah. Co yeah, there's, there are two words that we haven't used much, but there are definitely uh, co-production production and co-creation. Well, usually the co-creation is more conceptual, and the co-production is uh, actually doing things, right? So when they're talking about co-production, they're saying if the government involves citizens in co-production, that means that, for example, we could even have, I, I said that it's not efficient for us to, to, to do the garbage collection uh, uh, individually. But we do have here, for example, in Curitiba, we do have those uh, uh, cleaners that are in the streets all day long, picking up the garbage that people left behind. Right? See, the city is clean, in general, at least the, the central areas of the city are cleaner. Uh, I believe the city of Curitiba is clean compared to, 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 to any standards, at least for a country like Brazil. Uh, but uh, but we, do, we do spend a lot of money on those guys. That could be doing maybe something uh, that was more beneficial to our society. I mean, I, I find that what they do is very, I respect a lot these guys, but uh, at the same time, if we were, if we co-produced the cleaning of our city by first, uh, by being engaged, and being engaged means the best way of, of, of keeping it clean is not getting it dirty, right? So if we, if we, if we do that, and if, we, if we're engaged, remember that the idea of collaboration being in and, uh, and obtaining engagement, if we are able to engage people that was what Obama wanted with his memorandum. We will reduce the, the, the need of that kind of service. I'm not here discussing any social problem that could that, that could bring, right? Uh, I'm assuming that we could use uh, the, the work, the, the muscles and the brains of those people uh, to do other things that are important to, to our city, uh, considering that keeping something uh, clean doesn't take a lot of effort. It takes some effort, but not a lot of effort. Uh, Okay, uh, yeah, you saw there uh, 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 probably what the real objective was. Uh, in, and in fact, I think reading here the abstract, I don't see an abstract, uh, uh, an objective being, being stated unless they claim it's this thing here, propose a unified typo typology to support systematic analysis based on the overarching categories of citizen sourcing, uh, government as a platform, and do-it-yourself government. Uh, it's it's not exactly an objective. It's an, an an explanation of what is being done, which tries to let's say to respond to an objective. Uh, but again, which is uh, again, uh, I, I believe we could uh, do better uh, with a an objective that did. Uh, that did not have a, a problem with a next why question. Because if I ask here, why do you want to do this? The guy proposes a unified uh, typology. The reader is entitled to ask, why are you proposing this? And maybe the answer to, to, to this question would be a more interesting objective than simply the creation of the artifact. He's, he's basically, what he's doing here is, I, I'm going to create this typology. And, and OK, this is in result. Right? So to some extent, if, if, he, if, he, if he generates that at the end, it, it's, it's a result. I don't even know if it's the main result of the, the paper, but it, it's a result. But why is he doing that? You know? and, uh, and it will, will probably be because uh, he believes that we need, if we went to Obama's memorandum, he's probably in agreement with that and saying that we can, if we were able to, to improve engagement, for example. But anyway, that's always one thing that is important to do with, with respect to these objectives. It's always okay. I have an objective. If, I, if, if that objective still allows me to ask an, a why question, uh, uh, then probably that's only a secondary objective, and that I have something behind that should be made more clear to, to the reader. Right? So this this would be, for example, if I were reviewing this paper, that would be a recommendation I would give. Uh, this. It doesn't doesn't mean that they would agree with me because. But uh, that's the way I, I, I prefer to, to go about it. And uh, what is the methodology? <coughs> is
it seems that uh, they have a methodology simply to check if this uh, unified typology is reasonable, right? And then, uh, so, so they have a methodology to demonstrate uh, uh, its use. And then the, the methodology here is uh, the, sorry, the, the typology is applied to leading UX. So, so the methodology involves applying the typology to, uh, to leading uh, US government implementations. Uh, and then the results appear here in the, in the conclusion. The paper concludes with the discussion and, and this and that. Uh, so again, I, I would probably appreciate the, this, uh, this uh, um, abstract a bit. Uh, but in general, I, I find uh, the ideas and, and very complementary here to, to Obama's um, memorandum. And if you see, the, the chronology here works, right? This paper was written uh, um, a little later. It was published in 2012, I believe, yeah, 2012. So it is already probably a response to, to, to that kind of philosophy that was being implemented uh, of transparency and of an attempt of getting engagement and collaboration for, uh, from, from citizens. Um, well, uh, in, the, in the abstract, he mentions uh, a few terms or expressions uh, or categories, uh, categories as, uh, as he says, uh, that will be discussed in the paper. Sits in sourcing. Again, we were not so focused on, on e-government before. Uh, we had already talked about crowdsourcing and, and the crowdsourcing, thinking of a customer's crowdsourcing. But when you do a sits in crowdsourcing, this is what uh, he refers to when he talks about citizen sourcing. Government as a platform, what does that mean? What, does, uh, what is the intention of a platform? To make sure that people can either collaborate or coordinate. So the uh, government as a platform is, uh, the intention here is saying, look, we're not going to do the work any longer. We will have a platform where the citizens together, either by in, in terms of collaboration, maybe to take decisions, or, or um, by um, uh, how do I say uh, by by, by dividing, splitting among themselves tasks that need to be done, they they will they will act, actually take control. Okay. Uh, so the government as a platform, it it it, it, it helps uh, citizens improve their day to day day, day to day productivity, decision making, and, and well being, uh, but doing things that in the past we're expected to be government work. Right? And finally, and, and this has a lot to do with the do-it-yourself governments. Don't, don't just demand services. Solve the, the problems. In fact, this inspired one of my uh, undergraduate students a few years ago when he was a little um, upset with the graffiti in Curitiba's uh, walls. Right? No, I'm not talking about the artistic graffiti, I'm talking about uh, that graffiti that is definitely, well, at least to, 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 to yeah, we, we have the word in Portuguese, it's pichação, right? But uh, the, the, it definitely goes against the, the intents of the majority of the, the population. Not, of course, those who are doing it probably have their reasons, but, but everyone else doesn't like it. And again, uh, his, his idea was, can we solve that? There, can, can we solve that in a way that, um, that we, the, 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 the do-it-yourself do, do government. And he then thought of a, 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 he conceptualized, let's say, a business plan for that. Business plan, it's not a business plan, a plan for that, because it's not, it was not a, a business, it was more like a, like a social venture. I have to tell you that, unfortunately, he never implemented it. But the idea was, well, the, the, the citizens of a suburb, they would have, uh, well, the, the citizens of the city would have an app, where they, they first they, they, there would be citizens that could map whenever they saw a one of these graffitis on a wall. So it was walking up on a, uh, uh, walking on the street early in the morning and saw during the night someone came there and, and graffitied a, a wall. Uh, then uh, that person would take pictures. Uh, they would be geolocated, uh, and they would, would be available to another group of uh, citizens who could be the same people, but uh, but it could be different people who would go there and repaint. And then the idea was. Because uh, sometimes the owners of the place, they're, they're you know, I, I painted it and they did it again. So the owners sometimes give up and then the city starts getting messy. And they said, no, we're not going to give the pleasure 
to, the, to these graffiti people of seeing the, 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 the result of their art uh, um, for very long. If they do it in the evening, we will clean it during the day. So the, his idea was that he would get some uh, enthusiastic members of uh, the, the neighborhoods who would say, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'm, I'm willing to go there. And, and the same way as I'm willing to pick up garbage from, from the floors of the universe, say, I, I maybe a retired person, maybe a, a young teenager, uh, maybe someone uh, after work, they would say, yeah, I'll go there and paint. But then they would say, but I don't have the, the, the paints. And then he said, well, we'll go to the local paint store right, of the, the suburb. Most suburbs have a paint store, or at least if they don't, we'll go to a city paint store uh, and get them to be partners of this uh, thing. And they will, of course, they will, they will be uh, promoted as uh, being a responsive um, uh, firm that is trying to do good to, 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 the, to the city or to the suburb. Uh, so after the picture was taken, uh, this guy, the, the, the paint shop, will, will be notified. They will, make, they will uh, assess how much uh, paint is needed. They will provide the other citizens uh, that uh, have the, the, let's say, that are available to go there and paint with the paint for free. And, the, the, and, and those people are going to go, go there and give their labor time for free, and we will have a clean city. Right? I, it's, it's, it's a pity that sometimes uh, uh, students, uh, of course, he was doing that for, for his marks, he wanted to, to get out of the university, uh, and after that he was hired by one of these companies that drain all the energy that, that a person has, so although he was full of great intentions, he never uh, put that to, to work in practice. But I do believe that we would find, uh, we, we had the motivation for people to participate. It would generate engagement. In a society like ours, where we are each time more isolated from others, it would even generate some social bonds. Uh, it would, uh, I don't think that it would be difficult to find sponsors, let's say the paint uh, shops, to help with that. Uh, and the city would be cleaner. And, but many people would feel engaged that they would say, we are, we're not expecting, we're not sending uh, messages to the mayor telling them to solve our, the little problem that we have in our streets. We are solving it straight. Of course, we cannot do that with, let's say, uh, pit holes in, in the asphalt in the streets, because uh, for that you need uh, uh, special machinery and, and, and more talent. But for painting walls, this is something that we do not need a lot of skills and people could get engaged with. With respect to the, the pit holes, what we could do is at least we could inf help inform because the mayor has teams that keep going around the city and checking where there are problems. But if we are if we inform it and, and we do have channels of uh, informing, then they, they can reduce the, the, the efforts performed by those teams and they can go directly and, and, and solve the, the problems. Again, we still do not have very uh, efficient ways of doing that because today what you do is, uh, well, I, I think we do. We, we, you, 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 you. You call what is 156 uh, in Richiba, a telephone number, that, uh, and, and then you can send, I, I don't believe that you can send uh, pictures and, and things to them. And that, that's already some uh, collective uh, intelligence work. But it is a, a little, this, when it involves telling uh, the, the, the mayor about a problem, it is a, a, a customer service provider relationship. It doesn't provide the same sort of engagement that we would get with those people that would say, I will do it, because I will do it because I like, I like my city, I like my city clean, and I, if everyone does a little, uh, a, 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 contributes with a little share, uh, we, we, we get a lot done. Uh, it depend, it, it, this is, uh, th there is collaboration in, in assessing what is important at each time, but there is coordination of activities. Uh, each one of us, I will be in charge of making sure that there is no graffiti in my street. It's almost like if I, I'll be, become the mini mayor of my street, right? This is the we, uh, sorry, the do-it-yourself governments, assuming responsibility that we would not assume if we, if we thought that we were just um, customers of the government's uh, work. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I have uh, a few. There were a few things that they they wrote here that I thought that were were interesting. They say that the, the re-emergence, uh, let me see if I can find it on page 451. There's a lot of interesting ideas here on this page 451. Okay, so this, this re-emergence of citizen co-production as a critical policy option 
challenges the prevailing public administration paradigm of uh, new public management. New public management was a, again, a business, uh, uh, sorry, a government, government paradigm that said, that, that tried to bring into, sorry, this, this is it here. Ah. To try to bring the efficiency of uh, enterprise management into government. But it, it had that mentality that it was government as a service and it had custom, uh, citizens as customers. So what, what uh, they are claiming here is that we do not have to follow that track. Uh, we can have citizens as citizens, not as, as, as customers, right? Um, so here it says, which seeks to adopt market-driven transaction-oriented approach to the management of public services. But when you use those, and we, we, still, we still have a lot of emphasis on that here in Brazil, government, governments trying to be efficient and to work as if they were uh, um, regular companies and providing service. The more service they provide to the society, the more we will demand services as customers. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the author here claims that the new public management leaves little room for active citizen participation. Uh, so, and, uh, and of course, although the, the, the new public management had there's good intentions of, of having a more efficient government. Uh, it also pushed the citizens apart and made the citizens feel that uh, they, they, they would only get service from, from governments. Um, another interesting theory, I think here is this. Some, some argue that citizens, some argue that citizens have largely grown accustomed to this favoring the easy chair of customer over the seat uh, and turmoil of participatory, uh, participatory uh, involvement. And uh, I do believe that that happened after this new public management uh, uh, was introduced, uh, that we started thinking it's their job and not it's my duty as a citizen. It's my, or it's my obligation or it's something that I feel that I should be doing. And finally, uh, a little further down, It says uh, that in both here, the government remains a mechanism for collective action, action, but often in the words of Tim O'Reilly, remember Tim O'Reilly? We have already read something by, written by him. He was, he was one of the guys of Web 2.0. Uh, not an academic, but someone who wrote a lot about that. Uh, so in the words of Tim O'Reilly, as a convener and enabler rather than the first uh, mover of civic action. So, and th this has a lot to do with that, that idea of government as a platform. Uh, as the government, I, I try to create a platform where people can be empowered, can collaborate, can uh, split tasks, and can do meaningful things that make them feel as citizens, which is going to be important for, for citizenship in the future. Uh, one Problem. That our, I think one of the strongest problems that our society our society has is that we all feel as customers, and when we feel as customers, we are full of rights. We have little obligations. Right? You say I pay taxes, so I have the right of having a clean uh, server. I, I pay taxes. I have the right of having a more safe environment. I pay taxes. I have the right of having good a good system transportation. We only have rights. And the problem is, uh, I really think that the, this problem of us not feeling that we have duties, and, and, and not, not, not necessarily just having duties, but that we are engaged, that we, we, are, we are part of the, the, let's say, the formulation of the, the problems and the solution to those problems. We shouldn't just say, I pay someone to do that for me. Because when we do that, we are, uh, we are denying uh, ourselves the possibilities of defining where we're going. We assume that we're going where they take us and we're only pleased because the streets are clean or because we, we, we live in a safe environment when, when we are able to, to, to have those possibilities. All right. I, I realized that the, the, the last paper that I had indicated here for you is not available any longer. It, it, it requires a password and unfortunately I did have this pass password until last semester because I was associated to ACM but this year I didn't pay fees so I might I, I didn't have access to it any longer I'm sure that I have it on paper somewhere but I couldn't reread it uh, uh, this time so uh, unfortunately uh, sorry, just a second. 
unfortunately, the, it, it's a paper by Sandoval, where is it? Uh, Sandoval uh, Almazan, uh, is a, a Mexican professor. Uh, he, he has actually taken part in one of our classes in the previous year there. Uh, during the pandemic, we had this advantage. Everyone was working from home. One day, I, I know uh, this professor Sandoval from conferences that I've been to. I sent him a, uh, an email and said, well, look, we're going to be discussing your paper next class. Would you like to show up? And he said, sure. So he was there talking to us. Uh, uh, it was good. But that was 2020. In fact, I'll, I'll try if I find if I, if, if I find the recording of that video, I will include it here for you. Just for, again, I see. I always find it important that we know that whoever does research is people like, like we are, uh, that have the same kinds of troubles doing research. This is a Mexican research a researcher, so even more so. I mean, maybe a researcher in, in, um, uh, in, in the United States or Canada or in Europe has more resources, but in, in Canada, in, sorry, in Mexico, they, they stri uh, struggle with the same kinds of problems that we do here. Uh, but he, he does some research at a very high level, and, and I, I always think that it's important to say we can do it also. All right, uh, so I think this is, uh, I don't know if you have any questions, any comments, otherwise uh, maybe we could have uh, uh, what, a 20 minute break and come back at 10.20 to work on our forms. By the way, w one question I have about the, the, the forms, I, I, I usually see what's happening during the class itself, I haven't checked it afterwards, I realize that there, there are people that sometimes include material there afterwards um, and maybe they, they feel uh, unattended because uh, other people are not responding to, to, to whatever they wrote. Uh, again, I have to, you to think that uh, uh, our, our learning process here can be, in part, it, it can also be asynchronous and, and, and it doesn't depend necessarily on a direct response to your own question, but, uh, but it's important that you see what others wrote. Uh, I, I, keep, I keep being uh, uh, amused by the fact that different people pay, see different things in the papers that we read, and, and that's very enlightening because, uh, again, everyone knows something that the others don't. Whatever caught your, your attention and didn't call mine or didn't call your colleague's attention should be something to be highlighted because that would sparkle uh, another idea in, a, in another colleague afterwards. Right? So let's have a, a, a 20, 20 minute break and then we come uh, back at 10.20 for our uh, forum. Okay?